Monday Night Raw made me really sad. Yes, we got the new United States Championship. Yes, we got Heat Slayer on Monday Night Raw. But it's not about who was on Monday Night Raw. It's about who wasn't. Unfortunately, we didn't get Nia Jax. And that makes me so sad. I can't believe we didn't get Nia Jax. That pretty much ruins my experience. Something I definitely wouldn't celebrate. And uh, we miss you, Naya. I'm not saying you should, you need to return next week or in 2020, but just know that your departure makes us really, really sad. And we want to see you in the ring. It's like how bad these injuries can get, right? It's a slip up. Anything can happen. So I hope you're going to return one day. Just not next week. I don't know, man. Do we need tissues right here? What is going on? Let's hope Nia Jax's departure is not gonna ruin this video too much. Which is barely possible because... Oh boy, do we miss her. Oh, man. Thankfully, in 2020, we had things like Instagram, so I can check on her. You know, to see how she's doing. And I hope she's gonna return to the WWE. And I hope it's gonna be with it work. Yeah, that would be pretty fun. But even though we didn't get Nia Jax, the main character of Monday Night Raw, surprisingly, shockingly, this show was still watchable, even without Nia Jax, I know! So what did we get on Monday Night Raw? Well, the show kicked off with the WWE Champion, the second best thing after Nia Jax, and he was talking about Dolph Ziggler. You know, Dolph Ziggler is gonna face Drew McIntyre at Extreme Rules, the horror show, expecting a few surprises, by the way, and he can choose a stipulation. But it doesn't matter what kind of stipulation Dolph Ziggler is going to choose. Is it because it's way too predictable anyway? No, because Drew McIntyre still has the advantage in every every stipulation possible. We got Dolph Ziggler interrupting and he was talking about how Drew McIntyre always stabs people in the back. He's not a real friend. That's when we got Heat Slater coming out with no music. I would pop. This for me would be really, really exciting. Unfortunately, dirt sheets can't keep a secret. Uh, spoiler alert, a former 3MB member is returning to the WWE. Not gonna say who it is, but he's a former 3MB member, the ginger one. Not gonna say which one. Come on, dude, thank you for ruining the surprise. Come on. Anyway, I knew he's gonna be on my night show, but it was still kind of fun. This segment was actually very, very entertaining, emotional. Heath Slater was talking about how he was always there for Drew McIntyre when he got fired back in 2014. And when he won the WWE Championship, he cried. I cried too, you know, watching Brock Lesnar lose that WWE Championship was... It was tough, man. But Drew McIntyre was never there for Heath Slater. When Heath Slater got fired, Drew didn't talk to him. So, you're not a real friend, and I want to face you because you promised me a match. Drew didn't want to do it, obviously, but he kept pushing him, slapping him, so he was like, okay, let's do it. The shirt was off, man, and it got real, real fast, because that's exactly how it was, fast. That was a very short match. Yeah, that's kind of sad. Heath Slater looks buff, he looks great. You would expect a two-minute match, a one-minute match. But it was a squash match, so yeah, what was it, uh, it was good, but I expected a bit more, honestly, I think most of you will agree. Anyway, Dolph Ziggler is angry about that, he attacked Heath Slater, but Drew McIntyre saved him, and after that we got a pretty good moment, emotional, and they are friends again, you know, we got a hug, both of them were crying, kinda, pretty sweet, pretty sweet, I wish he wasn't fired. Why was he fired? People love the guy. And that was the highlight of the show, actually. I don't think anything came even close, but it was fun. It was fun seeing Heath later. We got Sasha Banks and Bailey bragging. They are running all three shows and they are on the top. It's like I'm watching the same episode of WWE every week, whether it's Ross, Magdon, or whatever. It's always the same promo. Two belts. Bailey two belts and Sasha two belts. I'm facing Asuka, she's facing Nikki. Then we got Asuka, and Kairi Sane is back. This led to Kairi Sane versus Sasha Banks. Pretty decent. But Bailey interferes, and we got a disqualification. 
the brawl continues, we got a few cool spots, and that was basically it. So Kairi Sane is back, is she gonna betray Asuka? I'm sure. I'm sure Sasha Banks is gonna lose the match, and after the match, Kairi Sane is gonna betray Asuka, and we are going to get a pretty decent match. The promos are gonna suck, but the match itself is gonna be fine. We also got the Kevin Owens show. The special guest was Seth Rollins, you know, a former rival of Kevin Owens. He gave him a present, and look, that's a t-shirt. You get it? I won the match! I kinda, I actually do like Seth Rollins' gimmick, you know, the messiah. I just don't understand the point. What is he trying to achieve? Sacrifice Rey Mysterio? Is he, is, does that mean he wants to retire him? What's the point? For the greater good of Monday Night Show or whatever he says. What is the point? Does that mean that he wants new guys to get opportunities? I don't know. It's kind of... It's kind of interesting. We got Rey Mysterio and Dominic, and this basically led to a tag team match. You know, because Kevin Owens wanted to be Rey Mysterio's partner. So it was Rey Mysterio and Kevin Owens versus Seth Rollins and Murphy. That was actually pretty fun. And of course, Rey Mysterio and Kevin Owens won the match. Rey Mysterio takes the microphone and announces an I for an I match. What does that even mean? I'm not quite sure. You take someone's eye out, you win the match, I guess. Well, that's gross. That is actually gross, and I don't want to see it. You only have one eye left, Ray. You probably shouldn't risk. Let's talk about this segment. I have a problem with this one because I don't understand how nobody in the WWE creative realized how stupid that is. I get that MVP is a cocky dude, so he basically revealed the new United States Championship and he carried that title, which is absolutely ridiculous. It wouldn't be ridiculous if we got Apollo Crews interfering, kicking the shit out of him and grabbing the championship. It wasn't like that. All we got was him carrying that championship throughout the show. So, they have this heel being cocky, pretending to be a champion, but babyface is nowhere to be found. It's either just stupid or they really don't want Apollo Crews as a champion and he's definitely going to lose the championship. Wow, that was stupid. Anyway, we got the new championship. You guys want to know my opinion, I guess. Well, it looks great. I think it looks pretty decent. Does it look better? I don't know. I guess it looks just as good. It needs a bit more color in my opinion, honestly. But other than that, I think with a good lighting, it actually looks pretty decent, looks prestigious, and looks classic. Uh, when it comes to Intercontinental Championship, it doesn't have that. So this championship to me looks better than the Intercontinental Championship. For the first time ever, I actually like the US Championship more. It wasn't Apollo Crews who actually cared. It was Cedric Alexander and Ricochet. And this obviously led to a tag team match. Ricochet and Cedric Alexander versus Bobby Lashley and MVP. Pretty fun to watch. And it ended with a pretty nice looking spear. So MVP and Bobby Lashley won the match. And after the match, obviously, Bobby was being Bobby. Oh, we love Bobby. Big Show and the Viking Raiders versus Randy Orton, Andrade and Angel Garza. So that was a match. That was a thing. Um, yeah, you know, I don't know, is that what Randy Orton is gonna do for now? Just Big Show and Randy with Viking Raiders, Angel Garza and Andrade? I like all the people involved, it's just the booking that sucks. None of these people are interesting at the moment except for Randy Orton, so, you know. Anyway, the match was fine, and we got Randy Orton, Andrade, and Angel Garza winning. MVP wants Cedric Alexander to join him. You know, obviously Cedric doesn't agree, but MVP kept telling him that you are living in, you know, Ricochet's shadow. Obviously, Cedric doesn't agree. And in the main event, we got a champion versus champion match. Asuka versus Bailey. Pretty good. Is it something I truly care about? Not really. You know, not really. Asuka took the W, she is going to face Sasha Banks at Extreme Rules Horror Show. And that's how the show ended, so... Yes, it was not a good show. Okay, I, I changed my mind. But, I mean, we got Heat Slayer, we got the new United States Championship, so... At least something happened. 
that is a plus. And again, Nia Jax not being on the show really, really affected the show in a very negative way. You know, what? why are we seeing these fireworks? Oh, oh, that's how people celebrate sadness? Do people celebrate sadness? What is, anyway, okay, that was your Raw. Thank you for watching The Red One. Peace, love, and hugs. It's been a pleasure.